Hello and welcome to Daily Politics. Today we are reaching you live from Trust TV here in Abuja. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Today we discuss the readiness of the Opposition People's Democratic Party, the PDP, in challenging the ruling APC in the 2023 elections. The PDP's retreat for its newly elected National Working Committee is still ongoing here in Abuja as well. The party said the two-day event was designed to recommit them the incoming escorts to the sacrifice of nation building. At the retreat, the national chairman-elect, Dr. Iyeche Ayu, said the party must be proactive. We can no longer be a party that just reacts to whatever the APC government says or does. No, we can't be that anymore, he said. We must be a party that thoughtfully articulate and design a clear program of where we want to take Nigeria and Nigerians, as well as how we <coughs> hold the ruthless APC government to account. So today on Daily Politics, we ask, what is the PDP going to do different? What can they do differently? What is the party's thinking? And what policy ideas could influence its politics as we get ever closer to the 2023 election? Joining me today is a man who has seen it all in Nigerian government and, of course, PDP politics. Dr. Muazuba Bangida Aliu Talba Mena, and is a former chief, chief servant of and governor of Niger State and chair of the Northern Governors Forum for eight years. Welcome to Daily Politics. Sir. Thank you very much. You're much welcome, Your Excellency. Uh, but before we go into the discussions, we'll take a minute, as usual, to bring you a roundup of politics in the news. Stay with us. The Senator Abdullahi Adamu led nine member National Reconciliation Committee of the All Progressives Congress has so far received 35 petitions from the aggrieved members over the last word, look government and state congresses. The chairman of the committee disclosed this after a meeting in Abuja. He expressed hope that the committee would do justice to all petitions and unite the party ahead of the party's national convention scheduled to hold in February next year. Although the state-by-state -state breakdown of the petitions was not clear, but he explained that the committee had analysed the petitions and was developing a timeline for meeting the petitioners to take verbal testimonies to arrive at a conclusion. A former president of the Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has made his intention known to run for president in the 2023 general elections. Saraki made his intention known during his visit to the governor of Benue State, Samuel Atom, in Makdi whom he called a good party man under the People's Democratic Party. According to reports, Saraki was in Makati with former governor of Kogi State Idris Wada and other stakeholders. The federal government has insisted that there was no massacre at Leki Tollgate in Lagos, contrary to reports of the panel set up by the Lagos State Government to investigate the incident which took place on October 20, 2020. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who stated this in response to the panel's report, also described the report as a sham, arguing that the numerous errors, inconsistencies, discrepancies and omissions had rendered it a fable. Mohammed, who spoke for the first time since the report was released on November 15, 2021, while he was away in Paris on official assignment, said the report is also questionable since its conclusions were not backed by any evidence. He equally questioned the panel for ignoring the 57 innocent Nigerians, 37 policemen and six soldiers killed during the protest, wondering whether they were not Nigerians who deserved to be protected and defended. Welcome back. This is Daily Politics. If you are just joining us, you can also follow us on all our social media handles on Instagram, on Facebook and of course on YouTube. So, sir, it's, the stage is left for uh, uh, you and the Nigerian people regarding what the uh, uh, PDP might be planning. Because earlier in the day, uh, yesterday, we had that the PDP were saying that uh, Nigerians cannot afford another four years under, uh, 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 under, the, uh, uh, under the APC. Does that mean you are planning to do something to remove the APC and replace it by, it was by the PDP? It transpired yesterday 
at the uh, sessions that we have had. We have had two sessions yesterday. First, we looked at the history of the formation of PDP, okay. the founding fathers, mm -hmm. their dreams and their aspirations mm -hmm. and how we inherited, mm -hmm. and then the 16 uh, years of PDP governance. Mm -hmm. And we also know that actually it was the PDP mm -hmm. that gave APC the success of 2015. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the history, mm -hmm. apart from the internal wranglings that we have heard, Mm -hmm. About five governors plus other key stakeholders mm -hmm. all moved to APC. Mm -hmm. Lucky enough, they, most of them have moved back to PDP. Having seen that, they have no place or they had no place in APC. Mm -hmm. And having seen that, APC came as an empty vessel that had nothing to offer Nigerians. Uh, sometimes it takes a lot for people to realize such mistakes. But many of us mm. who didn't move knew that that was what was going to happen. Mm. And today the PDP is repositioning itself mm. to appreciate what has happened. If you look at every facet of governance, you will discover the, the deficit that has accumulated between 2015 to date. And that we have to now find a way because don't just look at somebody's failure and say because somebody's uh, somebody had failed therefore you will pass no okay you have to do your homework we have to find a way to convince nigerians that yes they had given us a chance of about 16 years and they can now compare that 16 years if they have if they want to do that uh, with the six seven years of apc of today and then now we look at it and say to Nigerians, look, we have also learned if there were mistakes that we have made, we've also learned and we are now correcting them. Mm. And we Thank are now you. repositioning by looking at every facet. We are not leaving every, anything mm. to chances. We will look at every policy issue mm. and say this is the angle. In fact, that is what every party that is there on the ground should be doing. You should be identified for a particular thing. If, even if there is no pure ideological underpinnings, people must be able to identify you with certain things. And you can say. So it's, it's interesting that you, 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 you said the, the PDP actually going uh, uh, on a soul searching of some kind. And, and doing so beginning from the historical development of the, of the party itself. Yes. Many Nigerians, particularly younger voters, because the PDP has been uh, around for 22, 23 years. Mm -hmm. During that period, many Nigerians who were not even alive then, who had not been born, are now voters. Mm -hmm. And they're, in fact, in the majority as far as voters at, at, at the moment. Many of them are not aware of the founding philosophies, no, of even the founding fathers that you mentioned. You know. So how do you hope to reconnect the PDP's past with the present? Even if they were not aware, their parents or their guardians were there and they are comparing. Okay. There was security, there was food on the table, there were employments, and there was peace in the nation. Now, if you look at these four, four uh, issues, mm. then you will say they will be wondering, okay, how do we bring it back? Because what they know now is hunger, uh, insurrection everywhere, and in fact, even employment, as we are informed, are now instead of the normal employment, now they are almost for sale. But but the the the, the, the APC government would say that what in fact they have been doing is to do damage control. That the damage that the PDP had done in the 16 years of their government <laughs> has been what no, they are the, trying. I am happy to that clean that has become a hollow, empty discussion now okay because every nigerian whether you are aware then or not mm. now you can see the hollowness of such a discussion and that is why you don't hear much about policy issues from the apc party mm. you only hear a lot of bickering a lot of shifting grounds mm. and indeed a lot of manipulation so the pdp is coming out now to say look we have only 13 governors no, 13 and a half, if, if you will, <laughs> if you look at Zamfara, mm. then 
We will now go back. You think to he will come back to the BDP? There was a time. Mm. No, no, no. We have the deputy governor okay. as a PDP. Mm. So at least we still have a party there on the ground. Yes. In fact, we are the only ones with a party on the ground there okay. in, in, in Zafara. Yes. So people now can understand what transpired, what happened, why did it that we, we, we lost the election mm. in 2015. Like I told you, mm. it was more of internal wrangling. Mm. It was the PDP that gave APC mm. the success that it had in 2015. Okay. In 2019, many Nigerians mm. who can look at issues mm. uh, properly will tell you that PDP won the elections. Mm. The only thing that we do not control is we were not in control of the instrument of coercion of the state. Mm. We Which, were in control of that in 2015. That's what and I'm yet, saying. The, the wrangling, so perhaps the APC... The wrangling of the party okay. gave... APC the success it had in 2015. Mm. I told you about five governors, mm. uh, many key stakeholders, uh, stakeholders mm. joined the APC mm. in anticipation that whatever it was that w was there, whether change or whatever, uh, they, many people thought, yes, good things could come. Mm. But now after six years, everybody could see that there was nothing more than the rhetorics mm. that were there in the campaign. Mm. Thank so you. now okay. the PDP must have realized, and we have realized mm. some of the mistakes that were made. <laughs> we will to never to allow to internal to wranglings. Mm. I was going to take you on that. Mm -hmm. You said that you have learned lessons yeah. of the past. Mm. You know the sixteen years that you had communication. Mm. Yes. So b beyond the wrangling, internal wrongling, yeah. which is damaging enough for a political party. Exactly. But what are other things? Because the other internal wrongings don't connect to Nigerians. If you can see mm. what is happening today, okay. people are talking. Just three days ago, mm. we lost one of the former gubernatorial candidates mm. or aspirants of, of Zamfara, Zamfara State on mm. Kaduna Abuja Road. Mm. A day after that, these people still came and operated there. If you look at all the headlines, you will see what is happening in Niger, Sokoto, Zamfara, and Co. Mm. These are bandits. Mm. We have almost forgotten that Boko Haram is there operating in Northeast. Mm. So virtually, the northern uh, states, the 19 northern states, mm. are in siege, including FCT. Mm. Because you hear about kidnapping in FCT, mm. even if the, no uh, the news is not given properly. Mm. The kidnapping, the ransom taking, and the fact that you cannot go, you cannot move around, even in Abuja, at the time you think. Mm. You are you saying that around. all of this uh, they are caused the by the APC government or we they are, are part of the problem that, that the government... The no, the government, okay. after six years, believe me, okay. when you take over, mm. you take over assets and liabilities. Yes. And after one tenure, you will have corrected whatever mistake that you might have identified. And by now, we should have been enjoying the benefit of the so-called correction. But what we have had, right from day one to date, is more suffering, more lack of peaceful coexistence in the country. Because when you look at the whole country, you discover if it is not IPOP there, it is a banditry there, it is Boko Haram there. And many people are even saying, look, let's declare either an emergency to arrest the situation or declare these people. When you talk to the security agencies, they will tell you that they have not been given mandate. They will see these bandits, a hundred of them, on a machine, three per machine, for a motorcycle. Mm. But they have not been mandated to do anything. So they will not do anything. And even in situation where they are operating, Unless they are given specific order, they are not supposed to do anything. So they don't. The road from he, from Abuja to Kaduna mm. should have been secured after a year of a problem. Mm. But are you are accusing the president of pampering bandits. I am accusing the governance, the lack of governance of pampering bandits. If you want to call it the president being the head of government, fine. 
but that the governors have not been there to take care of these issues. The first day you hear of a security issue is the responsibility of government and governance. And if you look at our constitution, that is the major, the first and foremost responsibility of government to protect lives and property of the people. All other things are secondary unless you are able to do that. Okay, so uh, uh, thank you. This, this is, I'm sure Nigeria's uh, uh, enjoying uh, uh, your comments. Now, you said earlier that whenever a government uh, or an opposition party takes over government, they take over both assets and liabilities. And liabilities yes. no, no one can fault this. You know, that's, that's entirely uh, correct. So does it mean that uh, the PDP now has plans? Or is formulating we, plans. All that we are doing. For example, you have been emphasizing security. The, re, the what retreat. Are the, the retreat. Yes. One, mm. if you look at our police force, not only are they poorly paid, they are underfunded, mm. they don't have the equipment, they don't have the numbers. Okay. Now, we are talking of federal, state, and even local police. In some countries, you can see. Even institutions have police. You go to universities in some countries, they have poli university police identified, employed, paid for by and governed by the rules of that university and taken from the constitution of the country. So all these issues we are discussing to see which is the best way. One, others have argued, no, take all the federal issues. Because if somebody said to me, if you go to, uh, to the state and say, let's have state police, mm. what about the same problem of funding? Mm. So why not harness the funding and have all the federal police in place? Mm. They are well equipped, well trained, mm. well motivated, okay. and given the right order to really act. There are people who say the uh, governors have no power over the police. That I fault. Okay. Because as a governor, when I owned all the institutions of uh, security, the DSS, the police, the civil defense, uh, all the other custom and whatever, when I say when I own them, is that I brought their responsibilities and their problems as my state responsibilities and problems. Mm. I looked at the deficit of what they lacked. Mm and tried as much as possible to do that. Mm. But many states, I, I got uh, 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 for them. I many states governors are supporting exactly. the police so and security formations in their states with a lot of funding. When you but do they don't that. have operational no, capacity. Sir. They don't have that no, command. Sir, that is, I gave, okay. even today, when mm. the argument came up, I gave an example. Okay. As a former civil servant, yes. I was a chief. That's head of unit. I was assistant director, I was deputy director, I was a director, mm. I was a permanent secretary. In each of this level, there is a responsibility attached to that office mm. that I don't have to wait for somebody mm. to tell me what to do. Okay. In other words, the DPO of a particular unit mm. does not have to wait until the commissioner tells him what to do within his jurisdiction. Okay. So if he's well motivated, he will be able to do even extra mm, beyond, but beyond mm. his call. But again, like I said, mm. we are in a country where a policeman is given a shift of 12 hours, and sometimes 24 hours. There is no country that does that. You have to give somebody within the hours that he remains sane and is able to do, and you pay him for what he has done. Mm. So unfortunately, what has happened now, and that we used to do. We were paying teachers, we were paying everybody. And even agreements that were entered were being fulfilled. But suddenly all the things have stopped. And we need to capture. For example, we have had stories about agriculture. We have seen some governors who are deceiving the system by trying to create pyramid by putting some few uh, bags of rice on top of uh, uh, whatever they mm. constructed mm. to call it a pyramid. Mm. And we knew it was not so. Mm. But there are many we areas need, mm, we across need the states where agriculture to is getting better. Agriculture mm. today mm. as a commercial entity on its own, not just subsistence. Okay. 
it must be a commercial entity and if you want to do that mm -hmm. it means you must look at the possibility of giving farmers their land title mm -hmm. you have 10 hectares the state must give you a title of your 10 hectares mm -hmm. so that you don't have to wait for government intervention you could go to anybody with your land title and get a loan and do your farming mm -hmm. we have to look at the way also to subsidize mechanized farming, farming. Mm -hmm. so that it becomes not only that we'll be talking of feed yourself feed yourself no mm -hmm. but by but, the time it becomes your excellency yes sir these are th th these are precisely the kind of policies that the apc the, had they always are not, promised they are nigerians, not uh, always which promised nigerians, but never always delivered promised. which nigerians thought they never delivered. always promised so are we going to have, we have delivered okay we will deliver okay. but that's the issue mm. We have delivered, we will deliver. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, even those who run, mm -hmm. thinking that, yes, it will work fine, mm -hmm. they have come back. Mm -hmm. So it means now the confidence mm -hmm. is more on the side of PDP to deliver. Mm -hmm. And usually, in most countries, mm -hmm. that is what happens. Yeah, you, you, you oppose this time, mm -hmm. you are given a chance to prove your worth, mm -hmm. If you don't do well again, mm. another party comes in. Mm. So, but this time around, we mean business, we mean 2023, mm. and we will campaign vigorously. Thank you. And we will make sure that there is no rigging in this particular uh, 2023 elections. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. We'll come back to the, 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 the issues of uh, whether or not how the election would look like, the fairness and... and the, uh, whether or not it will be free and fair. We'll come back uh, to that uh, in a minute. Okay. However, Nigerians will interpret what you have said so far mm -hmm. as a sort of um, already rolling out the campaign drums mm. for the PDP in terms of what policy areas you intend to focus on. You asked security, me a question. Yes, security so. and agriculture. Now... <laughs> Now, now that you tackle the security situation in, in, in Nigeria, particularly in northern Nigeria, and then uh, agriculture. Now, yesterday also, as during the retreat, one of the issues that came up was that the PDP are saying that, you know, Nigeria cannot move forward without restructuring. So maybe that Look, also is you, another... Whether, the word, mm. whether you prefer <clears throat> to use the word restructuring... Let me ask the question, Your Excellency. Yeah. Mm. So if you have you, the restructuring, the PDP is saying that Nigeria cannot move forward without restructuring. Now, the PDP has every right to take any position on any issue in the country. However, <coughs> restructuring happens <coughs> to be an issue that appeals to one side of Nigeria, but alienates another side of Nigeria. Is that the kind of politics I'm we should aware, be expecting? I'm not aware of one side or two sides or alienation. No. Okay. You see, this is where I was coming when I said, whether you prefer to use the word restructuring, mm -hmm. you want to use the word reform, people, what they are looking for mm -hmm. is they want to be secure, they want to live a peaceful life, mm -hmm. they want to do this. So all this talk about whether we should go uh, zonal as regions mm -hmm. or whether we should go back to the old ways of doing things mm -hmm. these are all where people are debating to see which is the best way mm -hmm. so I don't think anybody is alienated in this okay. uh, quest Yet. quest for reform mm -hmm. quest for restructuring mm -hmm. quest for peaceful coexistence where people will feel at home wherever they are in Nigeria I think that is the basic part of it and now even in our constitution is there you can go and vote and be voted for anywhere but we know that it takes time mm. the prism the people think sometimes takes a while before it changes mm. somebody if you tell somebody that look do you remember that in, in the first republic mm. that somebody from Borno was taken to Makodi to run for elections and he won Mm. Somebody from the, the, the northern uh, region then went to Inigo and became a mayor. Mm. But because of the way we are today, the way we have uh, uh, fragmented our politics and our living, mm. people find it difficult to understand that. 
Now that is what we're saying by either restructuring reformation. Nobody is alienated in terms of saying there is a need for reform. Whether it is the reform of, of the way we think mm. or the structure of the way we are running the governance, Govern. mm. those are the things that have been debated. Mm. And I don't think any northerner is afraid whether you want to call it a structure or you want to call it reform, let's come and discuss it. Mm. But then each party should be able to say, this is the way mm. that we think this will be done best. Mm. And I think that is why the retreat now, and this retreat is not one and for all, will pick again subject by subject. For example, in the next two, three months, we'll pick agriculture alone, come and discuss it. Then that will form the basis of our manifesto as a party mm. to go to the people with it and say this is what we think if you get us in this is what we'll do for you very interesting uh, discussion excellency now uh, uh, um, the there's a bill before the president uh, right now uh, to amend the electoral system you know to amend the electoral act you know how elections are to be governed in the country the next very elections one of those provisions in that bill is the direct primaries. So the PDP did not largely use direct no, primaries in the, you know, in the most recent, in yes, indirect, indirect uh, delegate uh, system. Delegate system. Mm. Now, what is the position of the party in that? Given that many Nigerians tend to feel that direct primary is like giving power back to them in deciding who first of all, becomes the candidate of a party, and then certainly who gets to be elected. Uh, okay, let, let me, before I speak on this one, let me make yes. a disclaimer. Thank you. I am not aware that the party has taken a firm position as to which one. Okay. But if you ask me as a person, mm -hmm. I will say, yes, we have done the delegate system. We have seen the minuses and the pluses of the delegate system, mm -hmm. where you get some few individuals to go to a particular place mm -hmm. and decide for the whole country who should be what. We have seen where a delegate can collect from five, six aspirants mm -hmm. and sometimes even absent himself from voting because of what he has done. Mm -hmm. That's for that one. And we have seen also where the delegate system can be manipulated mm -hmm. by those in authority. And here, if I say those in authority, either the president or the governors, mm. uh, you can always manipulate the delegate system and call. Mm. Now, you will be tempted to say, then why not the direct? Okay. With the little that we have seen with the direct primaries mm. that APC had conducted, mm. that too we can see already the manipulation. You remember what happened in Anambra? Yes. The APC gubernatorial candidate then, mm. in the, 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 their direct primaries, got two, more than 200,000 votes. 300,000, actually, he said. Then when the actual voting mm. came, mm. he got 43,000. Okay. Where were all these people who voted for him? Mm. So in other words, mm. for me, I have had the argument mm. that, yes, those who are running for other offices mm. have always been intimidated by either their governors or their president mm. as to who should be what. Mm. And they think that direct primaries may liberate the particularly assembly people, uh, national assembly, state assemblies, and local governments, that that may not, may help them. For me, I will say, let us try it and see. Okay. And if we try it and see, by the election of 2027, uh, we can always amend the Electoral Act. It's an act, not the Constitution. Mm. If we see that the corruption is more mm. on the direct primaries, mm. then we can correct it. But don't throw the babies with the bathwater just because mm. you are particularly used to a particular way. Okay. Uh, will I have thought differently uh, when I was a governor? I have always been a slightly liberal person. Mm. For me, I will not have hesitated because I know as a governor or as a president, mm. if you are able to communicate properly with the people, you can always have your way. Interesting. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency. Now, this leads us to the issue of <clears throat> the new ESCO. 
um, not just what they, how they are going to hold the PDP together, how they are going to heal yep. the wounds of the wranglings that uh, you pointed out earlier, which have been in the PDP even up till this moment, because many co cases are still in court, challenging A, B, C, D, and so on. But also in terms of the atmospherics of that, you know, the fact that if um, the chairman of a party comes from a particular region in Nigeria, that's always seen as a signpost for where the president will be zoned to. Uh, the PDP and zoning is in fact within the AP, uh, PDP constitution. Uh, the PDP thinking zoning towards 2023? I was a member of the zoning committee. Yes. Uh, we had uh, 28 from the northern state and 27 from the southern state and we sat down and did this. And when those who were for swapping the position so as to heal certain wounds okay. uh, succeeded in saying we should swap, mm. then we added a proviso. Okay. That that swapping does not preclude anybody from running for the presidency. So it goes without saying, and we even said at the discussion level that if, for example, a northerner or somebody from northern states uh, picks the ticket and goes to win the presidency, then the chairmanship, the chairman will resign and will now be okay. taken back. Okay. So is there in black so and white flexible. we signed it okay we signed that part mm. but i believe we will come to it mm. when it is about time but as as far as i'm concerned as if a member of the zoning committee mm. that was the agreement we agreed that we needed to swap the position mm. otherwise what used to happen was two tenure a mm. chairman coming from a particular zone mm. or particular region will now serve for about two terms unless there is an issue. Mm -hmm. Now an issue came up and we swapped. Okay. But because we swapped, because we were expecting that that chairmanship will have stayed, no matter what the problem, mm -hmm. will have stayed where it was before, we provided that for this look, rule. Don't give room now mm -hmm. so that there will be no problem. Mm -hmm. So that we kill this perception of saying because the chairman came from mm -hmm. the north, the president must necessarily come mm. from the south. No. Mm. In other words, the party it doesn't have a position. Not on at the yet. moment. Okay. If we are able to come to terms, the zoning must work. I'm sure we will set up another committee to work on it. But I'm I'm aware that a paper that, uh, that there was uh, we had two papers, mm. the 2015 election, mm. which uh, a committee headed by former Sen uh, deputy senate president Ikoromadu mm. had a report. And then we had the 2019 elections, yeah. of which the current governor of Bauchi State, yeah. Bala Muhammad, also yes. had a report. And in each of these, even the issue of saying, look, for the presidency, begin to leave it open yeah. so that anybody who feels he can aspire, yeah. let him come and run the mills. Yeah. Because the campaign itself is a learning process. Yeah. If you rely only on delegates, then you are talking of only those with money who can just sit down, wait, not campaign, go and buy the delegates and get the ticket. But Thank if you run from your award, yes, you may spend more money actually, but then you are spending money to the generality of the people. Thank you. So um, I will be taking you on on maybe the position of the PDP vis-a-vis -vis Northern Nigeria. Yeah. You know, in between 1999, 2007, even uh, 2003, and even up to, to, to 20, uh, 2007, mm -hmm. the PDP controlled a higher number of states in northern Nigeria. Very well. Today, they control quite uh, uh, fewer. Yeah. So I'll be uh, taking you on that. But before then, we will, be ta we will take a break uh, for a minute. When we return, we will continue with the discussion. Stay tuned. <laughs> Get latest updates on current topical issues and breaking news by downloading the Trust TV mobile app on your Android devices. Go online, click Google Play Store, search Trust TV, install the app, 
and get doses of unfiltered information on happenings all over the world in your pocket. Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Daily Politics on Trust TV. And today we are discussing the readiness of the PDP for the 2023 elections with, of course, the former chief servant of Niger State and former uh, uh, chairman of the People's Democratic Governors, uh, PDP Governors, as well as former chair of the Northern Governors uh, Forum, Dr. Babangida, Dr. <coughs> Mazu Babangida Ali. <clears throat> Thank you for being on the show with us uh, Thank you very once much. again. Uh, Maybe <coughs> we correct this thing. There yes. is no former chief servant. There is no chief servant yet. Before him, so right? So there's only chief one. chief servant Thank you. until we see what happens. Thank you. That, that correction is well taken. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, as, as I was saying, in, initially in tw uh, uh, 2019, 1999, the PDP cleaned the whole of uh, North Central mm -hmm. states, mm -hmm. and then they cleaned all but one uh, 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 northwest states, mm -hmm. and then divided northeast, uh, northeast yes. with uh, uh, the AMPP, APP as it then was. Yeah. This was repeated again in 2003, mm -hmm. and to a lesser extent also in 2007. And even when the CPC came, mm -hmm. despite Buhari's popularity in the region, mm -hmm. the CPC could take only one state uh, uh, away from the PDP. In, 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 in 2011, that's Nasara State. <coughs> yes. But today, the PDP has 13 states. You know, very few of them. I correct you, I said 13 and a half. Okay, 13 and a half. Um, <coughs> well, <laughs> the PDP has 13. We have a half in the Rampara. That's all right, sir. They, they, but very few of them, just about two, three yeah, uh, no, from I northern understand. Nigeria. Has the PDP lost its appeal in the north? In fact, it is now, okay. for me, uh, having gone around and I have not been in, uh, staying in one place, I, I, I've been moving around. In fact, the appeal of PDP is now more okay. because people now are comparing what transpired before, hmm. what could come after. And because of the expectations of the people, but like you said earlier, the issue is dividing those who enjoyed it before, mm. those who have never tested only knowing this time, mm. but knowing suffering. Mm. But even then, as governors, mm. we used to, we had a sense of unity. <coughs> anytime, excuse me, Sorry. anytime we decided on a matter, mm. we used to go and carry it out. But suddenly we hear uh, currently that some people don't even go to meetings of northern governors, some people, uh, a lot of colleagues, decisions not taken, and so every governor to himself, which is rather unfortunate for us because we need this sense of unity. No matter which party you are coming from, you have a common interest, you have a common history, and a common sense of development. Mm. And we need... As northern states. As northern as states. One northern Nigeria. Mm. Even at that time, or during our, when we were younger, our parents had to be begged to make us remain in school. Mm. <coughs> I used to proudly say to people mm. that I was paid to stay in school mm. because I was paid transport money. I was paid allowances. I was given soap in, in the school. So, for me, now that it has, uh, that even parents are sending their children to school, mm. no employment. There are a lot of rumors going around that employment are now for sale. Mm. So it's no more the way it used to be where vacancies will be declared, the Federal Civil Service Commission will be given the vacancies and they will advertise and people will apply. Well, already they have application because people, as you finish your NYSC, you go and sign. Some of us were lucky. Mm. During my NYSC, uh, that was 7778. By 78, I had some letters of appointment, so I had to decide where to go. Mm. At the camp, before we left the camp, we had people came and interviewed. Every state was coming to interview mm. some people. And now, 
that you have more people coming out from the universities mm -hmm. or from the tertiary institution, there is no employment for them, okay. which is rather unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So we need to come together. Now with the banditry, mm -hmm. where children in schools mm -hmm. are being kidnapped, we need to find another way to encourage education properly. Hmm. Because this is something that we must not leave alone. If we leave it, we are back to square one. Others will be going to school. Hmm. The work will be there. So even if you are buying work, you need some qualifications. To, to be, be able, able to, to exactly. be competitive, yes. So this is where now we come in. Whether you, I am a governor or a former governor, hmm. this is one issue that to me hmm. is nonpartisan. It is neither a PDP or APC issue. It is the development of Nigeria issue. Okay. And we don't need to be partisan about this one. There are some issues that you can pick mm. and not be partisan about them. Mm. And sincerely think about it, formulate a policy, implement it properly. Okay. And that includes education, particularly in the northern states. Okay. Thank you, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, now, we're looking at um, the the idea that the PDP is now um, excuse me yeah. closer. That, that's all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's now closer uh, to 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 youths and to women also, and that the party is in fact rebranding. So we were thinking whether the idea of uh, appointing uh, a 25 year old as against a 63 year old that the same party did. Uh, uh, before uh, <laughs> is 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 a sort of uh, a brand rebranding to Nigerians that we are now a different uh, uh, party, and if that be true, what are other rebranding strategies? How are you communicating? Me, even to that time, yes, that youth leader was not sixty-three, but okay. since the politics took over yes. and the argument went like that, uh, we deferred, we removed and brought a younger person and now we have gone to the actual youth to say look take care of your people in fact as we're speaking now yes that's the topic that the retreat is discussing mm -hmm. women and youth okay why women and youth and why should you pay attention more to women and youth mm -hmm. believe me they are the solid dependable and loyal voters mm -hmm. once you have that group you are sure of winning elections Women, once they believe that they will support you, mm. they will stand by you, no matter what. I have seen a situation where a husband and wife were quarreling, that we agreed to vote for this person. Why are you changing your mind? Mm. Because the man collected some few mm. naira at that place, and the wife refused. Mm. He said, when we were coming, we agreed to vote this way, and I'm going to vote that way. Mm. You know, so we need them. We need to mobilize them properly. We need to go to them. A majority of them are in their houses. Mm -hmm. And they need to appreciate that whatever happens outside and in governance also affects them. Mm -hmm. So do you have policies specifically targeting women since they are in, exactly. in the houses? No, no. They are the not ones, okay. If you make the society peaceful, if you secure their environment, if you make sure their children go to school, if you make sure that they feed very well and they feed their households, mm. those are the policies that would affect them directly. Okay. And then making sure that they are not unnecessarily cheated. So even the judicial system mm. must take cognizance mm. of the women because many a times they are cheated both by the judicial system mm. and by the culture mm. and by the people that they stay with. Yes. So those are some of the things that we will make sure mm. that all these issues are brought to the fore. Mm. You see, unfortunately, every institution mm. has been touched. You remember the judiciary just recently. Mm. A, 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 a justice of the Supreme Court. Mm. Her house was uh, mm. invaded. Mm. The Supreme Court. Mm. That is anything that they have decided upon in this country you can only say Allah Isa from there if you, if you are not mm. happy with what they did Thank you can't you. go anywhere mm. 
we have no business and we need to look at the judiciary from the Sharia yeah. to the main but judicial system yeah. so that they are all part and parcel of the society as we yeah. go. Your Excellency, this is uh, interesting talk, but some people are feeling that, well, it is wanting for Nigerians to even be angry mm. with the, with the, or disappointed as mm. it were, mm. or angry as it may be mm. with the APC. Yeah. But that may not necessarily mean maybe acceptance or that. acceptance maybe, of the people. Maybe that is what you, you forgot I said so. Okay. That don't ever mm. think that because the other guy failed, mm. that that means you succeed. No. Okay. But use that his failure too. Mm. So how to are you going to more. get Nigerians to forgive and For, find PDP forgive. We attractive? We didn't do anything wrong. Okay. The fact that we elected APC in 2015 did not say that the PDP did something wrong to Nigerians. Okay. What is simply said, we, keep, we couldn't keep our house in order. Okay. And therefore, other people even left mm. and joined mm. the other party. Mm. And because of that, success went the other way around. Mm. And because our own people are for peace, look, well, whatever you will take, whatever you will say about President Jonathan, mm. he was a man of peace and he said his election was not worth the blood of any Nigerian. Mm. And I'm sure that is why he conceded defeat mm. quickly. Mm knowing what could have happened mm. if he had dragged on. And you remember the Peace Committee also yes. had a hand in making sure that things work out mm. properly. Mm. So let nobody think it's about forgiveness or about non-forgiveness. No. Mm. There was nothing wrong more than the little and the inside wrangling of a party that could not put his house in order before the election. That was it. Interesting. And this is something to really say to the people. Okay. Because once you start saying, forgive me, it means you have done something wrong and illegal. Okay. And what is it that was done 20, uh, uh, sorry, 1999 yeah. to 2015 that has not been doubled now? Okay. What? Thank you. Thank so you. Uh, by that, that, that takes us to just about uh, close to the end of, uh, of the show. So I have maybe one or two uh, uh, questions, funny. The, the the president of Nigeria, uh, President Muhammad Buhari, he said that the PDP destroyed Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That was the word he used. Yeah. Destroyed mm -hmm. Nigeria. PDP leaders destroyed Nigeria. Uh, as chief servant and as governor of Niger State for eight years, yes, two full terms, yes. you were very you know at the top right there yes, with the leaders. Of the people, you were not president, mm -hmm. and you may yet be, mm -hmm. but you weren't uh, a president at the yes, time. Sir. But you were chairman uh, Northern Governors Forum, yes, sir. Chairman PDP Governors Forum. Mm -hmm. So I, people would assume that if the PDP destroyed Nigeria, I like the word "if," sir. Before you land on this, your question, okay. But the like president said, said so. He, had, no, he no, must no, have no. reasons. The president, for the president said so okay. as a candidate who was looking for something. He wanted Nigerians to vote for him. Mm. You, as a journalist, mm. as a political scientist, yes. I learned as, as a subject, mm. the subject of propaganda. Mm. Mm. As a journalist, no journalist, a trained one, mm. that does not know propaganda as mm. different from facts. Mm. I do. Will you come looking for to take mm. something away from that person mm. and be telling people, oh, uh, he knows how to hold it. I just want to hold it for him. Mm. Uh -uh. But he said but so he as recently as, you know, a year or so ago. That is all part of the propaganda because if okay. he doesn't say so, mm. how does he justify what has been happening? Okay. That is his place to say so. Mm. That is the place of any minister in his government to say so. Mm. Any political appointee in his government to say so. Because by saying so, you are constantly justifying your existence and your presence at this particular time. Mm. That's the essence. Okay. But we know, if we had destroyed, you had six years to repair. What's happening? Okay. 
Mm. Is the destruction that much that you have nothing to do? No. Yeah. So we must see beyond the words. We must see who is capable, who has the capacity mm. to do certain things. Mm. We must not be hundwinked by mm. words, propaganda, and uh, public opinionated. Mm. But, but it's not, it's, it goes beyond hoodwinking and propaganda because Nigerians voted in elections throughout and they chose to vote for the APC in 2015. Not just because the PDP was, div was divided well, internally, it was divided. but it was divided internally, okay. but not just because of that, okay. but also because people had seen uh, just that. Imagine, yes. Just imagine, just imagine. The five governors or key governors, mm. Kano, Sokoto, mm. Rivers, Adamawa. Mm. Mm. Just imagine that. And Kwara. Mm. In terms of Nigerian politics, mm. those states alone mm. to move. But, but precisely, that, that, that's precisely the point. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were disappointed even with these governors in their by their performance no, no, in their no, own no, states no, no, in the first no. place well, then why do they and that's why those no, state no. that the voters in those all these states they went to the so why APC is it, in they should have punished so, them okay they should have punished them by not voting but all the states all the states the, that all I the states voted, voted APC. APC. yes so that means they were punishing pdp that's that's that's, that's no, the point okay they what they should have not wait go back to rivers Okay. No matter what happened, also their own random and whatever also created mm -hmm. a problem for them, just similar mm -hmm. to the one we are discussing now. Mm -hmm. Look, when you don't have a united front, no matter how strong you are, mm -hmm. you will be defeated. Thank you. And I think that, that will happen. Thank you. I think that will, when you don't have a united front, you will be defeated. I think uh, this is where we come to the end of today's uh, program. We wish. It will continue so that we can enjoy uh, more of our discussion with you. But thank you for joining us uh, for staying with, and for staying with us, uh, viewers. We hope that tomorrow you will join us again for another episode of uh, 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 Daily Politics. I am Suleiman Suleiman. Thank you. Thank you.